Hello and welcome to testing in Django. So this is a Django testing series for beginners. In this first tutorial, we cover a range of different topics. So first of all, I introduce testing and different types of tests that we might run in Django. We then build our first test in Django and then we look at how to run tests and then look at the test output. So to maybe state the obvious to begin with, but to ensure that we cover this from the very ground up, testing applications, simply put, is important to check for errors in your application. So if you have been using Django, you've probably already seen that Django does a good job of capturing errors and providing us developers intuitive feedback in the console. So the problem here is that it won't capture all types of errors. And as your application scales, it is less than desirable as a testing tool. So we need to test our application to ensure that it is error free. So there are a number of types of tests we can perform in an application development lifecycle, which helps deliver a quality assured application. So a more fundamental overview of testing to get an overall picture, think of testing in phases. So as we start building an application, we can code the different parts of the system and we might stage by stage also test them. So as we build these different parts of the system, we might need to then test the integration of these smaller components. Then once we have completed the coding of the application, a complete integration system, we might perform a system test to test the end to end functionality of the software. And then finally, we might test and evaluate the system's compliance with its specified requirements. So there sure is a lot of testing that we can do. So in this series, at least to begin with, we're going to focus on unit testing and then move on potentially to integration testing. So unit testing, unit or unit testing is a software development and testing approach in which the smallest testable part of an application called units are individually and independently tested. So let's think of a unit test as individual and isolated tests that test one very specific function of our application. In fact, if you haven't started thinking about structured testing in your development workflow, you are probably already performing unit testing manually testing the functionality of individual components as you develop them. So for example, you develop a page, you'll check the URL to make sure that the page is working. So unit testing can be done manually, but is usually automated. In this Django testing series, we're going to first focus on using the automated testing technique or automation testing and the unit testing approach. So before we start talking about automated testing, let's just uh, give you an overview very briefly what is integration testing. So we know that unit testing is testing small components, individual components, so integration testing. So unlike unit testing, where we test individual components, another testing approach, integration testing, are larger tests that focus on testing maybe entire applications. But put another way, integration testing combines different pieces of code functionality to make sure that they behave correctly. So we use unit testing for smaller components. Then we connect these components together. We then test their integration. OK, so this is a small picture of a much larger testing picture. Here we focus on integration testing later in this series. So before we start actually building tests in Django, let's just talk a little bit about automation testing. So if you've built any application, you know that the actual outcome doesn't always match the expected outcome. Something simple as a typo or missing a sing single character can have a dramatic implication on your application. So automation testing or automated testing is a very common software testing technique to test and compare the actual outcome with the expected outcome. So you can easily imagine your application did, should do X, Y, and Z. So let's just test it to make sure it does. 
In Django, automated testing can be achieved by writing test scripts. So that is of course exactly what we're going to do quite a lot, in fact, in this Django testing series. So there's some great benefits of creating automated tests. Once tests are written, we can run these tests constantly to continue checking the quality or functionality while the application continues to develop. And of course, it's not just as we write new code we can test, we can test when we refactor the code or mod modify the existing code. So you can test to ensure your changes have not affected your application. Another good reason for creating automated tests is that your application might include third-party modules or packages. Also, applications like Django are in constant development. As new versions of the software are released, the code base might change. So obviously we rely on Django to work in a certain way because we, we code around it. So when or if you update Django or an, a dependent module or package, automated testing provides a good way to test your application with the new and updated packages you have installed. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a flavor of what and why of integration testing. So I'll go ahead and create a new virtual environment so Django ships with a testing framework. It's actually just a wrapper for the Python's built-in unit testing framework. So the Python standard library module unit test is definitely well worth a read if you want to learn a little bit more about Django testing. Apologies, I'll just start the virtual environment and then I'll just uh, pip install Django. So I'll just go ahead and create a new application uh, called Core. And then I will create a new application, start app, and then I call this testing or task one. So as soon as we create a, a new application in Django, you probably noticed that if we open up the actual new application, we have a file called tests. .py. So as you might imagine, in Django we can control what tests we run. However, Django, when instructed, will in fact look for tests to be run in any file that begins with test. So like I said, you probably noticed that when you create a new app using the start at command like I've just done, at least with Django 3.0, a test.py file is generated in the app folder. Taking a look at the test by file, you'll notice straight away that tests that we're going to write will extend the test test case, which is a subclass of the unit test dot test case, which runs the test in isolation. So I guess I'm just saying that Django just hooks on to the Python standard library module unit test. And like I said, creates a wrapper around that so we can do some Django testing type of activities, but essentially we are utilizing the Python standard library module unit test. So this unit test module defines tests using a class-based approach. Therefore, you will see that we write tests using a class-based approach, not a function-based approach. A common question is why is this important? Well, I guess object oriented techniques such as mix-ins, multiple inheritance, uh, can be used to factor code into reusable components. And I guess that will be useful when we start to write ever more complex tests. So let's go ahead and write an example. So we're building a class here. So we're gonna focus on the detail later. We just wanna make an example here so that we can introduce some of the fundamental knowledge, underpinning knowledge of working with tests rather than actually building tests, which of course we will cover in great detail further in this series. So we're gonna create a, a very simple test here using the URL tests suite. Of course, we want to extend from test case. 
So now we want to define individual tests. So let's create an individual test case. So we start by giving it a name. So we start by using the word test and then we give it a, a name ideally that we can easily understand or somehow define what the test does. So for example, check homepage or test, test homepage. So here it kind of describes what this test is going to do. So self. So what we want to do in this test is we want to capture the response. So we're going to test the URL to check to see if the, the URL is working. So here we get the, the URL that we want to test, which is just going to be the home URL, the slash. Let's just uh, remove that. So we're going to test to see if this URL is working. And then we're going to store the response in this variable response. So now we need to just check to see if the response that we received is the response that we're expecting. So we're going to use assert equal. So very briefly, assert equal is a method in the unit test dot test case class. It forms a test assertion. So first of all, we're going to write a string. So we're going to get the response dot status code. So we're going to extract the, uh, the response code from the variable that's returned from the test that we've made here. So we're just testing this link, this URL. It's going to be placed in the response variable. We're then going to test the status code or check the status code. And then the se se second attribute here or parameter is the actual code we want to check it against. So here essentially we're just going to check the home page or the slash URL, uh, get the response, and then just check to see using the assert equals if this matches this here. I do apologize for the explanation and the, the simplistic explanation maybe. Um, trying to talk and type at the same time is quite difficult when you're not used to it. Okay, so now we've got our first test in place. We now need to run the test. So we can control the information returned from running test. And this is defined in the verbosity, uh, which we can use to determine the amount of notification and debug information that's printed in the console once the test has been completed. So here we got the option of zero, which is no output, one is normal output, and two is verbose output. Of course, before you run the test, just make sure that you've uh, created, if you've created an app, to put it into the settings of your core application to register the application. So now we can go ahead and run the test. So let's just go ahead and type in manage.py test. So notice we didn't really specify anything there. So this is the method of working if we want to run all tests. So notice here, if I just move this up, you can see that the test has failed. It's quite clear and obvious that the test has failed. Obviously, we haven't actually set up the URL. So if the URL is successful, we return a HTTP 200 response. Obviously, in this case, we return the 404 because there's no page available. and It doesn't equal 200. Therefore, we create a failed test. Another interesting output here is destroying test database for alias default. So tests create a, a temporary database. Once the tests have been completed, this database gets destroyed. So we now know how to run all tests using ManagePy tests. So we can also specify the application or where the tests are in what application the tests we want to run. I think I've mixed it up, but so if I wanted to run the tests in task one application, I just need to specify here 
that I want to do that. So I run test and then task one. Obviously I get the same output, but that's a manner in which we can further define what tests we want to run. So we can further define what tests we want to run just by extending. So in this case, manage by test, task one, tasks, and then the URL tests right here. So we can further define that. And of course, then we can go one step further and then just test the individual test. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at a successful response. So I've gone ahead and just created a very simple view here and hooked it up to the URL, so to the home URL. So let's just go ahead now and run this. So let's run the test again. And now we have a successful outcome. So important here, we don't actually have the server running to make this test. So it's not necessary to run the server before we create this test. And you can see here that we had round one test and we have returned OK. Again, it's destroyed the database that was created. OK, so there we have a beginner's overview or beginner's guide to Django testing. So I gave you an introduction to testing and testing in Django. We built our first Django test. We ran it. We had a look to see the different outcomes. We noticed that we don't actually have to run the Django server to actually run tests. So now we're in a position and now we're ready to move on to more advanced testing. So thank you for listening. Hopefully you've learned something here in this tutorial. There's going to be plenty more in, these, in this series, slowly building up to more advanced functionality, testing functionality and features. Of course, we will in this series utilize different third party programs. We're going to try and stick with Django as much as possible to begin with. And then we move across and start feeding in other packages that's useful when we're testing in Django. So thank you very much and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.